Welcome back third, fourth, and fifth graders. Um, we are going to be starting a new art project for all third, fourth, and fifth graders. Um, we are going to be doing some heart art. This art is um, due, oh, uh, covers the weeks of February 1st and February 8th, and it is due Friday, February 12th. All right. And this um, artwork, we are going to create a themed artwork using geometric shapes. And the theme is hearts. Um, so we're doing a, a heart themed artwork. And this is kind of what it's going to turn out to look like. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through. You can see there's a lot of geometric shapes in this art. You are going to need a straight edge for this project or a ruler. If you have a ruler, that's great. If you don't have a ruler, any kind of straight edge, like a piece of cardboard or something would be fine. Let me grab my ruler. All right, we're gonna start with a big heart. I'm using um, my paper in um, portrait orientation, which is a tall paper, because I want a nice tall heart, but you totally don't have to do that. You can actually use um, um, make it go uh, wide like this. So and that's landscape orientation. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is find the center of my paper. So I'm going to go ahead and fold it in half. That tells me where the center is. And just like my um, primary students, the easiest way for me to um, teach students how to draw hearts, where most of you have probably drawn hearts before, but if you want it to be fairly straight, what I do is I um, usually make a point, two points on this a folded line, one a hand's width down from the top right here, and then another one near the bottom. Okay? And then once I get those dots in, then I go ahead and draw my heart in. So the heart's going to start at this dot and it's going to go up like a hill, and then it's going to go over to the side, and then it's going to come down. Okay, same thing over on this side. I'm going to go up, like I'm going up a hill, curve over, kind of keeping an eye on both sides to make sure they're similar. Oop, that didn't even make it. See, I'm doing this while I'm looking in the camera, and I kind of went off a little bit. So let me erase that. Technology can be challenging. Okay. I'm just going to straighten that up really quick while I have a chance because this guy didn't go quite right. There we go. That's a little better. I can always clean that up a little bit better. Later. Okay, so I've got my heart. It's fairly even. All right. Now we're going to make um, this heart geometric. So I'm making all these polygons. Polygons are um, sh um, shapes that have multiple sides. So triangles, rectangles, octagons, hexagons, etc. So we're making all these polygons. Now to start making it very geometric, I'm going to start with a rhombus shape right underneath this dot. So you can use a ruler if you want to. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, a straight line down first. And don't go too far, maybe just about that far. It doesn't matter how big the little rhombus that we're going to make is. And then I'm going to make a perpendicular line or a line that um, crosses it. So I'm kind of making like a T shape like this. See how it kind of looks like a T or a cross? Okay. And then I'm going to join and I'm going to make like a little um, kite or a rhombus shape out of this using my ruler. This might take you a few minutes to get. It doesn't have to be even on both sides. My ruler's kind of moving around. Okay, get the idea? If you need to pause the video till you get your um, little kite shape where you want it. Okay. Now next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, make some dots around my heart 
on the edge. And I'm gonna make the dots um, about two finger spaces apart. So on every two finger spaces, I'm gonna put a dot on my heart. So um, on the lines. So I'm going around and I'm just making every two fingers or so, I'm making a dot every two fingers. Now you could use three fingers too if you don't want so many dots. It's up to you. This is a pretty big heart, so it's got lots of dots. I'm gonna try and move a little more quickly. Every two, and then I already have a dot down there, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here. If you notice your dots aren't exactly even, it really doesn't matter. I'm just doing approximate. Dots, dot, dot. Sorry, my table is squeaking today. I might need to change tables next time. Okay, so I've got dots all the way around. Okay, now those dots are going to be dots that I use to connect corners. So I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm just gonna start randomly. Let's say I start right here. And I'm gonna start anywhere on this little rhombus, any corner I want. I can just choose a corner. I'm gonna choose this corner. And I'm gonna go from that corner to a dot. And I'm gonna draw a line, okay? And then I might choose another dot and go to another corner. And then I might change it another way. You can use the same corner and connect it to another dot. So you're just, point, you're just joining points to points. Any point that you see can join to another point. Maybe even I wanna join this point to this point. So what you're doing is you're creating shapes. So I'm gonna keep going. I wanna make sure every dot is connected to something. So maybe I'll connect maybe these two dots. You can also connect a dot more, dot more than once. So maybe I also wanna connect this dot here. The more lines you draw, the more shapes you're gonna have in a section. So it just depends on how many shapes you want to color in. The more lines you put, of course, the more shapes you end up having. So I'm just gonna keep working here, creating different shapes. Maybe put one way across here. Joining point to point or point to rhombus, whatever. You're connecting points. Okay, I might connect here to here. Whatever kind of feel you feel looks right. There's really no wrong way to do it. So just kind of have fun with it. Okay. Just gonna keep going. Both sides do not have to be equal also, so I just wanna let you know that. They don't have to be the same. So just because I join one point one way on the one side doesn't mean the other side has to be the same. It's nice to have a variety. Okay. I'm gonna try and work a little faster here. But you feel free to pause the video as many times as you need so that you can get your shapes in. I'm gonna work just a couple more minutes because I am almost finished. You can look and see where you have a gap. You know, where you have a shape, like this shape's way too big, so I really need to kind of break that down. So I'm gonna find another way to divide that shape. Point to point, okay. I'm gonna join this one here. It's looking good. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. That's a lot of spaces, and I do, I do understand. Um, I'm actually gonna be painting my spaces. I kinda like this little real watery look. I don't even mind that some of the colors kind of are bleeding into one another. Um, and that's up to you whether or not you wanna um, 
do them more neatly. Um, I would try and stay inside the space as, as much as possible, but, um, and you can use whatever colors you want. You can um, use a limited color palette, but you, of course you want to use at least three different colors so that you can change colors when you get to a new shape. Um, I'm going to be painting mine, um, but you can use oil pastels. Markers are great. Crayons, colored pencils are great too. Um, you could have a lot of fun with this, and it's really um, kind of therapeutic because you're just kind of hanging out and you're just coloring spaces in. Okay, you don't have to worry about um, anything specific. You can see here I'm starting with red and I'm going to start painting these spaces in. And also, um, when um, I paint these spaces in, I'm not trying to paint two spaces next to each other the same color. So I want to rotate my colors around. So maybe if I paint this color red, maybe I won't paint the ones next to it red, but maybe I'll paint this one red. Okay, I'm just using watercolors, but you can, you, like I said, you don't have to paint. You can use any materials you would like to use for this project. Uh, you might want to let it dry between colors. I like to use one color until I'm all done with it. And then when I'm all done with it, then I switch to another color. So maybe I'll make a red one over here. And I usually go through and get all my reds done all over my page first. And then I switch to a new color. Maybe you want to use all the colors of the rainbow. That would look really pretty. Um, if you're using three colors, think like every third space, I probably need to do another red one. So maybe one, two, three. Oh, this one needs to be red. And then, or if I'm using four colors, I might do every fourth space red. And then um, when I'm done with red, then I can go back and I can start another color. Maybe this one's going to be red. I always use the tip of the brush when I'm painting. Um, and my paint is pretty watery, so it might run a little bit, but you kind of get the idea. All right, so basically keep on going with whatever material you're painting uh, painting or drawing with. And then when you're done, uh, you'll have something that looks similar to this. This one, of course, didn't dry in time, so it kind of bl bled a little bit and, um, onto my, my orange and my red kind of bled together. Um, but I kind of like the look of it. It looks pretty cool. All right, when you're done, uh, color it in. You're just going to take a picture of it and send it to my email. And um, I really look forward to seeing your heart art. Hope you guys have a great time. Talk to you soon. Bye.